In this episode, we're going to be finally replacing the Jinbei EF200 uh, Monolite uh, LED. And I actually thought twice, should I even bother making or uploading this video? Because what you're about to see is a rocket science project that it was extremely complicated. I have successfully changed the fan, the stock fan from the Godox SL60W, in which it's bored. You have uh, three uh, three ports to choose. You have to bypass a couple of things there and install the fan. The reason why it was necessary to bypass the circuitry is because the original fan has enough amperage for the board to detect its presence. If you buy an octo fan, any other fan, I don't care what fan that is, so apparently, I don't know what this fan does that um, the board doesn't complain about it. What happens is if you install the fan there, uh, the board is not going to sense enough load, so it's going to be complaining about it, causing the front LED to, to flash every second or so. You can even see on the fan, it's like the fan is spinning, and then you see on a millisecond, it's almost like the, the, the blade is stopping. Like, and then it stops, and then it's crazy. I tried several fans. I bought like eight from Amazon. I have to return everything. It was a mess, okay? So this is the stock fan. It's a uh, Nidec brand, Ultra Flow. Um, it's a uh, 12 volts, 0 0.18 amps or 180 milliamps, okay? And it comes with the uh, standard wires that you expect, the, uh, the uh, yellow, black, and red. I found a newegg.com, a fan very close to this. Apparently the RPM speed here is 2400 or 2600 RPM which is what the board from the gym bay when you connect this fan likes it okay so the fan that i installed in this uh gym bay is the uh, arctic f9 these are 92 millimeter fans in size not the 90 not the you know 92 millimeters okay so the problem with this fan here is that also it doesn't sense uh, the board doesn't sense enough load so i have to hack by uh, breaking the blades from this fan and install a Noctua RPM attenuator, in which I have a bunch of Noctua fans here, right? Just to give you an idea what it takes to change the fan on this gym bay is absolutely ridiculous. Now, if something goes wrong with your gym bay, even if you didn't do this, let's say the, the light accidentally, whatever, okay? There is no phone support from gym bay anywhere on the internet. There is no way to even email them. If you find a way to email this company, you have to know Mandarin Chinese because in English, they don't even accept it. I got this information from Adorama and this is how it is. And Amazon also try to help me with the phone number support and nothing. So if something goes wrong with your lights, forget it. You can't even order parts because they want to speak Chinese. Even if you find a way to uh, get in, in touch with them, I don't even know if they can supply uh, another LED or another fan or whatever. So be aware of the Jinbei company. You cannot communicate with this company. Once they ship to uh, from Amazon to your house, from Adorama, b and doesn't carry Jinbei, I guess, for a good reason. Jinbei EF200 is one of my favorite lights. It's so bright, out outperforms the uh, Aperture 300D, I went to B&H and tested with a light meter, you know, it's not really like a scientific test, but it told me that um, it's a half a stop brighter than the Generate Radiance, which is a beautiful light, I also have this light here, and also outperforms by a full f-stop of the, uh, compared to the uh, Aperture 300D. I was so glad that I bought the correct lights because I did a lot, of, a lot of research. So going back to the Jinbei installation, again, the fan that you want is the Arctic F9. You want the standard case, not the silent fans because they, they don't have enough amperage and RPM is too slow. It's gonna cause your light to run hot, which this fan is also, also can pose a problem. Uh, with the stock fan on the Jinbei, the temperatures on the heat sink a little round thing uh, on the uh, surrounding the LED does not exceed 39 degrees Celsius. This fan here, which is not a silent, a silent fan, but better than the stock by about 40% quieter, you will have to be careful. I installed it anyway. Hopefully, nothing will go wrong. But the light is reaching over 75 degrees Celsius on the heat sink with this fan, which is 
1800 RPM. This is 2400 RPM, so you can see the big difference between 1800 to 2400 thus of cooling a light. Jinbei is a, is a very powerful light, is a 200 watt. There is no way you can have silent fans the same way I changed from the Godox SL60W because it's a little 60 watt bulb. So if you have that light, go ahead. It's super actually fun to open it up and replace the fan. You're actually gonna have a good time because I like it. If I have 100 people sending me those lights in, I'll be glad to change it for you. Uh, if that's what you're thinking, I might be able to arrange something. All right, I'm gonna give you the idea here what it will take to replace the fan on your Jinbei F200. So this is the fan that you wanna install which is supposed to go replacing the fan, correct? So the uh, Arctic extender case F9, good. So I'm gonna take this out of the picture here for a second. If everything was easy enough, all you have to do is uh, install the fan there, run the wires to the board, good to go. No, uh, the problem is the original fan, the uh, board is programmed, I guess, to uh, go with a certain amperage and load which is about uh, 12 volts um, up to 200 milliamps. And these fans here, uh, the silent fans, unfortunately doesn't do enough load that this one here provides because here's the thing. The Godox SL60W is a little tiny 60 watt LED. You can get away with, uh, you know, nocturnal fans such as this one here, right? It takes a 80 millimeter fan, good. No problem and there are three ports on the board in which you can bypass this light here there's only one thing to put to attach on the board just one slot uh so what happened is all the fans that i bought i bought two different types of nocturne fans i also tried this one here um the leds including on the godox the same problem happens fortunately again like i said you can bypass something in the back there that eliminates the problem the first thing you're going to experience the LED is going to be flashing about a second or so. And then uh, you can even see the fan connected to the board. The blade seems to stop for like a millisecond. It doesn't stop completely, but you, you can see when this LED pulses, flashes, you're also going to see the same pulsing effect like the, the blades are going to stop. Like, uh, stop, uh, stop. is the weirdest thing. All because these fans don't have enough load to compete with the factory fan you know in these things here there is uh, engineering involved this is this is why they installed this noisy ass fan here because it's a 200 watt led and there is no way you can have a quiet light of this size especially when there's the ballast is built in inside that's why the aperture and the generate lights are quieter because the uh, the ballast is outside which provides a better heat management okay so this is what you're gonna do you're gonna install the fan where it's supposed to go this one here for example do not install noctua and you don't want the silent fans either because it's, there, is, there is not enough rpm to cool the lights okay the uh, stock fan the temperature on the heat sink does not exceed 38 degrees celsius this fan here which is a little bit noisy but not as noisy as this this is the best that i can do we can do uh, the temperature rises beyond 70 degrees Celsius. So I am pushing my lock. Hopefully nothing will happen to this light. But if you want a quieter fan noise, this is your only option. Okay, it's a 12 volt, 1800 RPM. You can install any fan here below 1800 RPM. And there's more. I measure with the uh, multimeter. It's supposed to be 12 volts. Even if you crank up the LED to 100%, the maximum current this thing is sending to power the fan, even the stock fan, is 9.7 volts, never 12. With that said, a 2400 RPM fan is not spinning at 12, 2400 RPM. Neither is this. At 1800 RPM, this is at 12 volts. At 9.7 volts, I would assume it's spinning at 14, 1500 RPM or something like that. Okay, so again, you're going to install this fan here, and this other fan is going to go right behind it. This is a dual fan thing, because you're going to have to connect them both, so the board will sense enough load 
to stop the LED from flashing. This is the only problem that I experienced with all these lights. Apparently, anything other than their, their stock fan, the board will bitch about something, okay? So forget it. Um, okay, so how are you gonna connect these two fans together? Open the back here. You're gonna have to open everything. There's three screws here. One, two, three. This thing comes right out. It's so easy to do, okay? And the same three screws on the back here. One, two, and the third one's on the bottom. This whole thing collapses this way. You're gonna have to cut all those little white little wire ties, okay? So to uh, get enough space there. So on the board, the fan is connected directly to the board, right? Of course. You're gonna have to cut, I would, I would leave at least, I would say six inches or even longer if you can, if you don't plan to use this fan at all. It's very simple. The first one goes directly to the Arctic fan. The second one, it's gonna go from the uh, RPM attenuator, the noise reducer, whatever they call it, right? And this I stole from my Godox uh, SL60W, this little bridge, because these wires are inverted. Computer is black, red and yellow this light is black yellow and red so it's very simple you have to uh, as you can see starts you can see the wire see the yellow is on the uh, on the side the, the red is on the middle and the black is on the on, on the side here right so you want to follow the wire here yellow which is going to become the black now and then the second one the red it's going to become the yellow and then finally, the last one, the same thing. So you want to do on the dummy fan from here, install the, uh, you want to solder these wires here, okay? So they are stiff enough to safely go inside. If you don't solder, the wires are going to be very flimsy, okay? So let me back it up here. I'm going to explain this whole thing again here. It's very simple, okay? One feed. It's gonna go, uh, I'm using the extension uh, here so I can have more room to work here. You don't really need to. So this is going straight to the Arctic F9 fan. Right there in front there, see it's spinning there. And the second feed, you're gonna put the uh, NARC12 and then you're gonna do this little bridge here. You can solder the wires if you want, but I, I like this type of connection. And then it feeds on the dummy, on the dummy fan, which is Velcroed to the back of this ballast. You can put the Velcro here and a Velcro on the fan. Make sure it doesn't touch the uh, metal housing so it doesn't do any vibration. Again, remove this sticker here. And you're gonna see a little hole, okay? And then you wanna pry that open. Don't forget this thing here with a little toothpick or a little tweezer or whatever, okay? This is a little washer that locks the thing in place. This is the only way to open a fan, to detach the fan from the body. Okay, so what I want to do next on the uh, Jim Bay fan, after the fan is out, cut the blades as close as possible to the uh, round thing here, okay? Apparently this doesn't alter anything. So the purpose of this fan here is just to add enough stress of low or, or load so the board doesn't make the LED flash, okay? So you're gonna be putting the uh, fan uh, Velcro attached to this side. This is the part that spins. You don't want Velcro here, of course. The ballast is right here. There's a little aluminum ballast inside this unit. You're gonna Velcro. You're gonna put first this fan first there. Velcro this with the uh, ballast. Make sure it doesn't hit uh, the surroundings of the cage. Make sure nothing touches anything. Put the fan there, and then you're gonna install your attenuator here right install here this is already comes uh with the with the uh, openings here you want to solder these wires so it makes the wire stiff if you don't solder if you don't put a little bit of solder here this is going to be very weak so uh the yellow is this one all you gotta do is plug it in there make sure it's fully inserted and then the, the red is right here and then the black is right there okay you might need to cut these other parts here and and solder the other wires here. It's that simple, okay? And then this will go finally on the other side that you actually made a Y connection, you know, feeding the both fans. Again, the first Y connection, everything goes straight to this fan. It doesn't need any modifications. And this one here has to be placed with this in between. The, other, the, the, the feed passes through here and then finally feeds the fan to a slow RPM. This thing is gonna spin so slow 
it's not going to make any noise, but the fan is there to add load on the board, okay? And then you can uh, close it up and your light is done. So I hope, uh, I hope that this video has been helpful. I don't want to open this light because I suffered enough uh, fighting with this light for 15 days. I am not touching this light again. It's very simple. Three screws here to open this up and three screws in there. It's very simple what's inside, okay? So this is the only way to install the fan. And again, it's still gonna hear, you're still going to hear noise from this particular fan because you cannot buy a solid fan. It doesn't have... The RPM is too slow, I'm sorry. A light of this power here, you can't. It's always gonna be a noise, but a lot less noise than this by, I would say, 35 to 40%. I measured in decibels. So this is the perfect fan for this. Or any other fan that's not silent, that it is a reputable brand. This one, I think, is Switzerland. The Noctua is uh, some other, uh, I don't know, but it's not Chinese fan. You want to find a fan that's as quiet as possible, but nothing below 1800 RPM, okay? Now, if you're looking for a beautiful LED monolight in, instead of the Aperture 300D, they cost roughly the same price, but I like this light better. This is the Generate Radiance. Let me see if I have the model here. It's the Generate AK230. It comes with a ballast, beautifully uh, lit in blue touchscreen display here. And this is the only way, this is the only thing that you have to carry. The light and one single ballast, which we also have the uh, V-mount option here, okay? So it comes with a beautiful case, I think to protect the, the uh, cables from scratching your ballast. It's a very sexy light and design. It comes with the reflector, the case, it comes with the remote, which is the same exact look as this. It's a touchscreen display and glows in blue. It's absolutely beautiful, this light. And this light is a full f-stop brighter than the Aperture 300D. Now, if you're looking for a case for your Jim Bay, I'll give the link in the description. It's an impact bag from B&H. I don't even think I need to provide measurements here because you can already see the space. The Jim Bay EF200 is a big-ass light. It goes right in here vertically, ready to take it out and you still have an inch of space. The Godox SL60W, you can fit two here, you can fit two gym bays here, or four, whatever monolights, okay? And the reflectors here, I put this uh, little soft box to, uh, so it doesn't scratch anything. The two reflectors are there. The gym bay comes with a very long reflector, so I don't know why they make a reflector so long, which is also seven inches the same exact way. The Godox, I put the remotes here on this uh, iPhone 7 Plus case. There's two remotes here. Very nice way to store it. Right there. Put this back in here. And the reflector goes right here. And these are the power cables, which you can fit four or five. And those are the speed rings for the uh, sock boxes, right? And I, uh, this doesn't come with the, with the uh, bag. As you can see, it's black. Um, I actually had a couple of these laying around, so I actually put in between so this light don't move and it doesn't scratch my light. I'm very picky with my equipment. And uh, so here you go. This is a beautiful bag. You have the zipper here. And uh, the Velcro here, nothing gets collapsed because the Velcro, as you can see, it's all the way there. It, this bag does not collapse. It's solid and beautiful. You have a handle right here. This one here. You also uh, carry like a laptop style, right? And also this to uh, lock up the bag. And this is super light to carry. And uh, so that's it. If you wanna, uh, to, if you are interested in buying a case for your light, which took me a lot of a lot of research to find a light uh, a case that allows me to put these mono lights vertically because I don't like anything on, on top of each other. So there you go, you pull this light out, done. Pull this light out, it's done. Collect, you put it back here, beautiful thing. The Generate comes with the case. So if you like this video or you found it somehow useful, uh, hopefully it was, please like and subscribe so we can continue to provide you guys some more useful and helpful videos with whatever problems you might have with your gear and some other things or reviews or whatever, okay? Appreciate it, thank you.